everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Kat. I'm a wife, a homeschool mom, and an avid reader. For everyone else, welcome back. We have reached the end of Aurelium. Um, I did have to finagle my way through just a little bit. And for those of you who didn't want to watch the vlogs, uh, and just want a quick recap of my month, I thought I would share here. Um, so I had 12 books that I was supposed to read for the month of September, and it did not work that way. Um, I did end up having to use some scrolls and some other. Um, I had to purchase some things to get me through this. So, that being said, let's run through what I had to read, what I chose to read for those prompts, and then what I thought of those books. So, first up, I had Restoration. And for this, I had to get my Ordinary, Qualifying, and Distinguished Levels. The prompt for Ordinary was Night Dew, and that meant it had to have a night sky on the cover. For this, I ended up using a scroll so I could use this one, this book several times, and I read The Forest Where the Phoenix Sleeps. And I had a great time with this book. It does end a little bit on a cliffhanger. And so now I have to wait for the next book to come out. But overall, had a fantastic time. I believe I gave this one 4.75 stars. And there, the reason I did was there were a few things in there that I personally didn't like, but it didn't take away fully from the enjoyment of the book. The characters are well written. There's a lot of necessary confusion throughout it, and so there's some parts where I was a little bit unsure where we were going but had a great time overall as i said i did use a scroll for where the phoenix sleeps and so this also went for my restoration distinguished level which was quick action in a crisis and for that one i had to have a title with a verb in it and sleeps is a verb um so I had a wonderful time uh, just being able to use this on several different books. I also used it for one other. Um, I used it for Animal Studies Ordinary Levels, which was Phoenix Keeping. It had to have a phoenix on the cover, and this has a gorgeous phoenix front and center on this book. So, three prompts. I did have to use a scroll for 35 points, and I made it work. All right, so that leads me to my next one, which was restoration qualifying levels. And for this one, we were studying poisonous or dangerous plants and had to have a poisonous plant on the cover. For this one, I read The Thirteenth Child by Aaron A. Craig. I cannot give enough praise to Aaron A. Craig. I love that she takes fairy tales that we don't always know as readily. And does her own retelling on them. This one is 
a tale of God's handpick the 13th children or the 13th child in a family is given to the gods and the gods can kind of vie for um, which children they want and this one ends up being uh, the god who her parents give her over to is the um, god of death and he has kind of some interesting gifts that he brings to her and the story is just so fascinating and rich and i definitely enjoyed the world that we were living in while reading this book i did not need to use any scrolls or anything for this book um but the cover art was gorgeous, and I have recommended this book to several other people since it has come out. The next topic that I had was shape shifting, which I again needed my ordinary qualifying and distinguished levels for this. For my ordinary levels, I needed a book with jewelry on the cover uh, for inanimate inanimate objects. And the book I picked was The Last Lost Girl. This is a Peter Pan retelling that has a very spicy chapter in it that you can totally skip without it um, ruining the plot of the story. It really, at least for this first book in the series, felt like that scene was just to appeal to those who enjoy to read smut um and while it was a very spicy scene i would say it was about a three um in the spice level there was just that one chapter that you could easily skip i believe i ended up giving the last lost girl four stars I enjoyed it and I liked the twists that Casey L. Bond had for it, but there were just some things that I couldn't really get on board with. Also, this is the first book in a series and I have no idea when the next one is coming out. I just I know that as soon as it does come out that I am going to want to continue the series just because of where we were left off. I want to know what's going to happen next. Up next, I had my shape-shifting qualifying levels. And this prompt or this topic was planet's effect on shape-shifting. And so we had to have a book with the type with a planet name in the title. I was a little lost on this one at first. I did kind of try, I was going to try to stretch it. And at the same time, the stretch felt like it was too far of a stretch. And so I picked another book and was pleasantly surprised by the book I picked. I went with The Last Girl on Earth. This is a sci-fi about aliens take over the Earth. And in the process, one of the alien families raises a human child as his own and keeps it a secret that she is a human. Because... This group of aliens deemed that humans were um, not able to change their ways to keep from destroying the earth further. So they killed off all the humans and set it up for them um, as the alien race 
inhabiting the earth. Overall, great story. It is a YA, so there are some tropes in it that I don't enjoy as much as an adult raising a young adult, but this is a story that I would put in my daughter's hands as a ninth grader and let her fully enjoy the world building that's here. Continuing down the list for shape-shifting on my distinguished levels, I was studying navigation after transformation and needed a book with a compass on the cover. For this, I picked Sea of Souls by N.C. Scriminger and had such a great time. I forget how much I enjoy the Scottish mythology and storytelling. This one is all about selfies and the selfies and humans coming together to fight a common foe. Now, this one again ended on a cliffhanger. I am not quite sure how I ended up with so many series this month that did not know that they were series when I started them. Um, several of these I really just thought were standalone. <laughs> but I had a great time with Sea of Souls. It's with the selkies and the being able to shed their skin, um, but not fully blending in with nature uh, or with humankind was kind of a neat twist to this. Um, and it was kind of neat to see that the the things that Scriminger did to build on the folklore of selfies and all of that. So I had a wonderful time with this one and I have given this one 4.5 stars. It is one that I was not expecting to be a series and so it kind of it brought me down because even at that with it being a series there's no known time of the next book and so I'm a little disappointed there. Moving on to astronomy, I just needed my ordinary levels for this and for this one the um studying was Constellation Cradle and it was a book released in your birth month. And so I picked The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. This one I actually had to purchase the letter of fate because I was not able to even start this one in September. So the letter of fate allowed you to um, participate without deadlines. And so using this one, it helped me in that case. Um, the God of the Woods is a story about a camp that is run by this rich family. Their daughter has disappeared uh, during the night, one night, and the hardest part for everyone is that their son had also disappeared 13 years before. And just that heart-wrenching um, time of having that you're you've lost now two children in the same location I could not even imagine I enjoyed the God of the Woods a lot more than I did Liz Moore's The Unseen World and so I gave this one a four star um, but overall 
the writing is good but she's a little more lyrical than i enjoy personally but overall i did have a good time with this and i don't regret reading it i do know why there is so much hype around this book and if you enjoy kind of a historical fiction mixed with some thriller and mystery this one would probably be a great choice okay so moving on to animal studies i did um i needed ordinary qualifying and distinguished on these and so for ordinary as i said i used a scroll to read uh, or to use the forest where the phoenix sleeps multiple times i have mismarked my form though i put where the phoenix or the forest where the phoenix sleeps also for my qualifying which was supposed to be a standalone and that one doesn't work for a standalone so i'm going to have to um take more points off um, because i did plan on using a scroll for this prompt but as I said earlier, several of my books I thought were standalones and turned out not being standalones. And Where the Phoenix Sleeps is not meant to be a standalone. So instead for that, I can use um, The Last Girl on Earth. I also can use um, the lot. No, I can't use The Last Lost Girl. Um, the god of the woods so i have a few that i can play with that will allow me to use these as a standalone also i can use the book that i used for my animal studies uh distinguished levels for that one and that was lucy foley's the midnight beast and for that i needed recognizing morphs a book that has had a cover change. While this is a newer book, this one has two cover options, and so I went ahead and used it for that. And I used my um, scroll of continuation here for this book so that I could start the book or count the book even though I started it in August but could carry it over into September because that's when I finished the book. So Midnight Feast, we have a snazzy new um, retreat has been built and during the summer solstice the tragedy strikes and the whole book is this thriller of trying to figure out what happened and how things went so poorly um i had a good time with this one lucy foley never ceases to surprise me this one is one that i couldn't exactly put my finger on why but for me this book rated a 4.25 there's nothing in there that totally blew me away but it also it just missed the mark for getting five stars for me had a great time with it overall though for art evolution i needed my ordinary and qualifying um levels and for ordinary we were studying image generation and i used a random emoji generator i can't remember what emoji exactly i got but i do know it had something to do with the ocean and so I picked Sea Witch. This is a fairy tale retelling of The Little Mermaid with a 
gender switch on the sea witch. This one really, I had a wonderful time with oops. the book technically is part of a series, but you can pick up any of them in any order because while it's overarching a series, um, it's more of a theme is a series. So it's the theme of the uh, fairy tale retellings, not the um, characters moving through the sea, through the books. So this one, I probably could have stretched it a little for standalone, but at the same time, that just didn't feel quite true to the intent of the prompt. I ended up giving Sea Witch, I believe, 4.5 stars. It was really interesting to see kind of the backstory of our villain in this one and to learn that maybe the villain isn't quite the villain that we think he was. Um, so a lot of fun with Sea Witch and... Um, that just leaves us with the last one, and that's Art of Illusion Qualified Levels. I needed a prequel for this. And there's been a book that has kind of floated on my TBR for a while, or, or my desire to read one day. Um, but I just kept putting it off because I didn't think that it was for me. But I ended up reading E. Lockhart's Family of Liars. In this one, we have the family from We Were Liars. And this kind of goes back in time. And we see that the kids being liars is not a trait that just came to them. Their whole family has this issue. And we get to see how the sins of the parents um, led to the sins of the children. I enjoyed this one. I was a little apprehensive going into it because I did not like um, E. Lockhart's Genuine Fraud. In that one, it just really, really hit the, missed the mark for me. But Family of Liars was an interesting tale in seeing how families can affect each other. So if you're kind of interested in those family dynamics, this one would be a great one for you. But there you have it. There are all the books I read for my Wild Form Druid. I am counting this one as completed. Overall, I ended up using um, I ended up using 70 points, I believe. I used five points for the letter of fate. I used um, 15 points for the midnight feast so that I could start that one early. I used, I believe it's 10 points for the um, or no, 15 points to use the scroll that allowed me to double up my prompts. 15 for when uh, the forest where the phoenix sleeps, and then 15 for the standalone, um, which I think I'm going to use God of the Woods for that one. And then. Um, I had one other 
that I had to use 10 points for, and that was to continue the book. Um, oops. To be able to continue the book after the month. Oh, Sea of Souls. I did not finish that one before the end of the month, so I needed the scroll there. So a total of 45, 50, 60 points were used um, to complete this. I do get 50 points for completing it. So I'm only technically 10 in the hole, but G was super uh, generous in giving points during sprints. And I ended up with a total of 115 um, points extra. So I am actually 105 points ahead for bringing into the spring. And I will also have um, two prompt change passes that I can use. I kept debating on using um, 35 guild reputation points to get the T dragon, but I'm going to hold off on him. Um, the implings are fun, but I know that that's going to be something I forget about in the future. So there you have it. I have officially passed my second year of wild form druid and i am excited to see what next year will bring i'll see you guys next time bye